Gosh, I, I hope you are not the type of person that has to be begged to spend time alone with God. I hope you're not the type of person where, 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 where you don't need the leadership here to keep coming after and go, please, please, read the Bible. Please, please, walk away from your sin. Because the Bible says when God's Spirit enters into you, that becomes your desire. You don't have to have someone pulling you, dragging you, getting you out of your sin. You can't stand it yourself. In, in 1 John 3, 1 John 3, verse 4, whoever makes a practice of sinning also practices lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he appeared in order to take away sin, and in him there is no sin in him. No one who abides in him keeps on sinning. No one who keeps on sinning has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Whoever practices righteousness is righteous as he is righteous. Whoever makes a practice of sinning is of the devil, for the devil has been sinning from the beginning. The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the works of the devil. No one born of God makes a practice of sinning, for God's seed abides in him. And he cannot keep on sinning because he's been born of God. By this it is evident who are the children of God and who are the children of the devil. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor is the one who does not love his brother. Okay, this passage is so clear. I don't know how God could make it any more clear to us. He says, if you are a child of God, you cannot continue in your sin. He says, because God's seed abides in you. Okay, God, the, the Bible says in, in Romans 6 through 8, it explains that something happens. You used to be able to sin. You, you used to be a slave to sin, like that's all you could do. He says, but then the Spirit entered into you, and now suddenly you're a slave to righteousness. See, and that's the same thing John is saying, that when his seed enters into you, you can't keep sinning. Because he's inside of you now, he's a part of you. See, so often in the church, we're like begging people to come out of their sin. And I'm reading scripture and going, my job should not be this hard. Because that should be the desire of your heart also. Those of us who are children of God, you know how you used to walk in your sin and it was okay, but never since the Spirit of God came into you every time, you know, sin still looks attractive. And there's times you start to head that direction, but everything inside is going crazy, right? Because that's the Holy Spirit of God in you. That's his seed abiding in you. You can't help it. The, the Bible says, look, no one who, and then he says, whoever makes a practice of sinning is of the devil. For the devil has been sinning from the beginning. I've heard so many testimonies in churches where people will say, well, my accountability partner stopped calling me, so I fell back into my sin. Well, the pastor, he doesn't preach against sin enough, so I just kind of fell back into sin. Well, my small group kind of disbanded, so I fell back into my sin. can you do that? Like, it, it's not all these external, these external things are great, they're helpful, they're commanded, but 
at the core of our being is this DNA called the Spirit of God that's in us that won't let us go in that direction. He says, don't let anyone deceive you. Whoever practices righteousness is righteous. It's the one who, don't let anyone deceive you. Don't let people say, oh, because you prayed this prayer, because you got baptized, because of this. He says, no, whoever practices righteousness is righteous as he is. That's the sign that the Holy Spirit is in you. You can't keep going back to your sin. Then he makes that statement, whoever makes a practice of sinning is of the devil. For the devil's been sinning since the beginning. Verse 10, by this it is evident who are the children of God and who are the children of the devil. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor is the one who does not love his brother. Now you may be thinking right now, Francis, what are you saying? Are you saying that if I'm just practicing sin and I can continue in my sin or I have hatred toward my brother, that I'm actually a follower of the devil? Of course not. I'm not saying that. But the Bible is. Okay? And you have to do something about that. You've got to grapple. Read this passage for yourself. This isn't Francis's opinion. This is the word of God that goes high above my opinion. But you, you may have friends that go, but my mom told me that even though I'm in sin, you know, I just, just, you know I'm just backsliding a little. That's great. That's great. And if you were judged by your mom at the end of your life, it'll work out wonderfully. But this is God and his word is saying, look, when my seed enters, my Holy Spirit enters into you, you can't just go back to your sin. That proves that you're a child of the devil. And I know that's, an, that's, a, that's a real heavy word for some of you because you think, really, a child of the devil? Is that what scripture is saying? You think, but I don't, I don't worship Satan. Hey guys, let me just clarify something. Okay, do you remember the story of Adam and Eve? When the devil approached Eve, did he say to Eve, I want you to worship me. I want you to sing to me. I want you to praise me. What did the devil say? That looks good, huh? Why don't you just eat of it? Why don't you do what you want? Why don't you eat of that tree, the knowledge of... Why don't you quit having God tell you what's right and wrong? And why don't you be your own judge? Why don't you make your own decisions? Listen, you guys, Satan's goal is not for you to sing songs to him and write albums to him. Okay, some people do, but I, that's not his goal. His goal is for you to do what you feel like doing without any regard to what our Creator has commanded us. That's always been his goal. Do you know the number one command of the Satanic Bible? If you read the Satanic Bible, which I, I hope you don't, but if you did, the number one command is not love Satan with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. The number one command of the Satanic Bible is do as thou wilt. Do what you want. We, as children of the King, are so grateful for his commands, and we're going, God, I actually want your commands. I love your commands. I don't want to do what I want. I want to do what you want. That's what his spirit does in us. It makes us slaves to righteousness. Is that in you? Every time now, when I'm in a big crowd, I think to myself, is it in them? If we took off the life jacket, could they swim? Is it they themselves that want to cry out, Abba, Father? Is it the spirit in them that makes them hate their sin? 
or do they need all the external things to keep them afloat? Hey, what's up guys? I hope you guys enjoyed that message from Francis Chan. Man, that message is something that we need every single day. It's sobering, it's powerful, it's biblical. Amen. And it leads us to freedom, to transformation, to practicing righteousness. It's so important that, that we get the truth of the gospel. The gospel is not a gospel of just an eternal destination, right? The gospel is a gospel that brings us forgiveness of sins, the filling of the Holy Spirit, a eternal destination, the kingdom of God, eternal life, right? Our names written in the Lamb's Book of Life, Heaven, Paradise, all these things that the New Testament mentions and Jesus mentioned. However, He also mentioned the fruit that we would bear, the things that we would do and walk in as His followers once we are born again, before His return, before we're resurrected, before we receive the redemption of our bodies, before we receive that glorified celestial body that we're going to receive one day. Praise God. Thank Jesus. But there's a lifestyle that we must walk in as believers, Christians, as the church, the body of Christ, sheep of the shepherd, followers of Jesus, disciples, born again ones, called out ones, anointed ones, whatever you want to call yourself. If you have come to faith in the gospel, if you have believed in Christ and you have turned to God, repenting of your lifestyle and your sins, wanting to do his will, to live his way, right? To live a new life and to receive the gift of salvation through faith in Christ, then there is a, there is a lifestyle that we must have as his people, as God's children. And Francis Chan does such a good job explaining that by the Holy Spirit, that now that we've been born again and are no longer slaves of our sin, from the past, that we are no longer slaves of sin, that by the Spirit's indwelling presence within us, now there's a call to do something differently, right? The Bible says to put off the old man and his conduct and put on the new man who was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. The Bible says to be holy as your Father in heaven is holy, but it doesn't say just be holy uh, in identity or holy in your mindset. It says be holy in conduct. Conduct means conduct. <laughs> you can read the Greek, you can read the Hebrew. Conduct is always going to mean the same thing. Conduct, actions, works, behavior, the way you live, the things you do must become holy as God's ways are holy because his spirit is now in you because you've been forgiven of your sins and now you've been called to bear fruit to God, to do good works that glorify your father in heaven. He says, let your light shine. And a lot of times we get so confused thinking that it's just about a confession and it's just about one day we're going to get to heaven type of thing. And it's like, Okay, that's awesome. You've believed, you've confessed, you've been born again. You will receive eternal life if you continue in the faith. But you must put aside every weight that so easily ensnares you, every sin that so easily entangles and hinders you and slows you down. And you must run the race that is set before you with endurance. The Bible tells us to, 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 to be holy as He is holy. And it tells us in 1 John, that he who says he belongs to Christ must himself live the same kind of life that Christ lived. <laughs> the Bible tells us, just like Francis Chan mentioned in 1 John, he who practices righteousness is righteous. I think that it gets old that everybody's calling themselves righteous and he's righteous and he's righteous and I'm righteous and my identity is righteous. But the Bible clearly says that he who practices righteousness is righteous. Where are the works? Where is the fruit? Jesus said you will know them by their fruit. God wants to see a transformation that is proven by fruit. God didn't just say I love the world. It says that he demonstrated his love for the world by sending his only begotten son Jesus Christ to 
to the world to die for the world. So God proved his love. He proved what he said. And I think it's the same type of power that we need to have by his grace to prove what we say. Live out our confession. You know, uh, in this season right now, Resurrection Sunday, Good Friday, the resurrection of Jesus um, after the crucifixion. It's like we're, we're talking about it. We're thanking God for it. But I believe that God is saying, well, do you believe it? And, and if you do, I want to see that you believe it because it says practice righteousness over and over again in the New Testament. Do good works over and over again. Bear good fruit over and over again. It says walk in the light over and over again. It says what does it say? You are a new creation. All things have passed away. You've been buried with Christ. You've died with Christ. So if we are new, where are the new works? We must be intentional about growing with God, guys. We must be intentional about getting into this word and getting it into our souls and allowing the truth of God and the spirit of God to renew our minds and to teach us how to live as his children. We were born in darkness. Now we've been born again into the light as light in the Lord to walk in the light. So we must understand this. We must apply it to our lives and please God with our lifestyle and walk because that's what he's called us to do. It's not enough to go to church. It's not enough to post Christian scriptures and quotes and it's not enough to ride around listening to Christian rap or Christian worship. We must practice righteousness because that's what God wants. And if we say he's king and he's, he's Lord, Real kings and lords demand things, command things, and the people who truly submit to their king and lord do it. So I just want to encourage you guys, listen to this message again and be reminded of what the scriptures say. Be reminded of the truth of God, that we've been called to practice righteousness, to stop living like children of the devil. Jesus told the Pharisees, you, you, you said you're children of the covenant, children of the promise, children of Abraham, <laughs> but you're liars just like the devil, the father of lies. So you're not sons of God, sons of Abraham, sons of the promise and the covenant. You're acting like your father, the devil. Jesus said that and the Bible says it in 1 John. Read 1 John 1, 2, 3, and 4. It's going to show you. The children of God will practice righteousness. Jesus' whole reason for coming and dying for us was to destroy the works of the devil. And in that context of the works of the devil is sin. If Jesus died to deliver us from sin, why do we still think it's okay to live in it? That's contradictory. That's, that's, that, that's so hypocritical. That's so fake. God came to destroy sin and to free us from it. So we must do what we can to walk in righteousness. Renew our minds. Spend time with God. Get in fellowship with other believers who are mature and hungry for the Lord and talk about the word of God. Remind yourselves of the truth right? Put off who you used to be. Start reminding yourself of who you now are in Christ Jesus, a new creation, a child of God with the spirit within you. The spirit is greater than the flesh. Amen? We must be intentional about the transformation if we really mean it. And God knows God will not be mocked. Amen? At the end of the day, the Lord will return and it says, judge all people according to their works. The Bible says in the book of Revelation, that some people's names will be blotted out of the book of, of life, of the Lamb's book of life. There needs to be a fear of the Lord. There needs to be a, a humility and a submission to God. We must work out our salvation with fear and trembling because we never know. The Bible says that Jesus wants to present us as holy, blameless, above reproach people to God when he returns. Will he see that in us? Will God be mocked and be fooled and be blind and not see what we actually did and how we actually lived? No, he will see how we lived. He will see, he sees, right now he sees our works. But it's so important that we get this guys. The church must look different. We are the called out ones, separated, sanctified, set apart ones to live differently than the world, holy, righteous. Amen. The Bible says if you sin, not when you sin, the Bible says that he's able to keep you from stumbling. There's so many scriptures that should embolden you and, and give you confidence and hope and faith to actually trust that the Lord will help you to live in a righteous manner. Not just always expecting to, to do this and expecting to go back to your old ways and, you know, backslide and all these things that people teach that the Bible doesn't. The Bible says if you sin. 
you have an advocate. You can come boldly before the throne of grace to receive mercy and grace for your time of need. You can confess your sins to the Lord and he'll cleanse you from all righteousness if you do. He doesn't want you to do that, but if you do, as you're growing, as you're learning, as you're renewing your mind, as you're learning to, to stop living carnally and start living spiritually, thinking spiritually. But we must get this. If, you, if, if, if churches remain closed, if you can no longer go to church listen to sermons, if you can no longer have somebody call you in and checking up on you and praying for you, is this and your relationship with God going to be enough? Because just like Francis Chan says, nobody should be keeping you afloat. Nobody should be keeping you in church, keeping you a Christian, keeping you a confessor of Jesus. If you really believe and will love God and want to live for God, you will keep yourself in that walk, in that hunger and thirst for righteousness. Amen? He who believes, he who loves God will purify themselves, will lay aside every weight and sin that ensnares and entangles them. Jesus said, deny yourself. So remember guys, it's all about righteousness. The Holy, the, the, the kingdom of God is about the Holy Spirit and, and, and joy and, and, and righteousness. <laughs> Peace, joy, and righteousness in the Holy Spirit. We have the Holy Spirit. What do you think he's wanting to lead us to do? It says, be led by the Spirit. Sons of God are led by the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit. Not the unholy spirit, not the unrighteous spirit, the Holy Spirit. So how can we say we're walking in the spirit? How can we say we're following Jesus? How can we say we're being led by the spirit, but we're not conducting ourselves in a holy way? We're not practicing righteousness. We have to start hating our sin and loving God by loving righteousness, embracing his word and his truth, even if it cuts, even if it convicts and corrects, even if it lets us know we've been wrong, we've been evil, and just take it and repent and talk to him and thank him for his grace and ask him to help you transform you and let's love righteousness. Let's love God. Let's bear good fruit. Go after righteousness. Obey what God says to do. Jesus is Lord, so obey the Lord. Jesus is King, so obey Obey the king. Jesus is the shepherd, so you sheep follow him. We have to stop following the voices and obeying the voices of strangers, of anything and anyone who is not Jesus, of any word and belief that does not line up and correlate with these scriptures. Amen. Hate sin. Love God. Thank him for the gospel. Thank him for Good Friday, Resurrection Sunday, by living for him, by walking out in your new identity in Christ Jesus, that is righteousness, that is holy, not only in confession, but like the Bible says, in conduct, in fruit, in works. Faith without works is what? Dead. Do not let your Christianity be in vain, be dead. Because if it doesn't have works, where's the faith? And if there's no faith, where's the justification? And if there's no justification, then can you still expect the glorification, right? The glory of yourselves with the Lord, the redemption of your body. We have to be careful. We have to stay humble. We have to have a fear of the Lord and really ask ourselves, examine ourselves and say, am I living for righteousness today? Am I loving God today by living for him? Am I putting on love? Am I practicing righteousness? Am I keeping his word? Am I living this thing out? If not, something has to change. I have been loving myself. I have been loving the world and the things of it. I have been thinking carnally and not Christ-like, not in the spirit. So I'm telling you, hate your sin, love righteousness and practice it, live it out because that's what Jesus commanded us to do and he has empowered us to do it by his own spirit. And he's coming back again and he's gonna see you and I face to face. Are we gonna be ready? Let's grow. If this video blessed you and helped you, please share this video. Share it with your social media family and friends. Like it, comment on it, bring some interaction, bring some engagement on it so that more people can view it. And, um, and I hope you leave a comment. Let me know if this helped you. Let, let me know if this, uh, if the Holy Spirit in you bore witness of this as true. Let me know if you see these scriptures when you read your Bible. Let me know if this reminded you of something that you used to believe, but because of the cares of the world or because of wrong theology, you, you have kind of forgotten about it and, and, and disobeyed and ignored and rejected. Let me know if this helped you and we can grow together. Amen. 
So if this is your first time in this channel, subscribe to this channel, and I'll see you, I'll see you next time on, on the next video, okay? If you guys want some free prayer shirts, the link is on the description below. Um, our blog is on the description below, and if you want to get connected with me on social media, everything's on the description below. Um, we'll get hooked up. Otherwise, other than that, I'll see you next time. Let's grow. Let's hate sin. Let's love righteousness. Let's live for God. Amen. Bless you.